All right, Bobby, what are we really doing today? I really want to try and dress up the motor. So now you need me to pull the motor out. I'm, it would make it much easier to do everything. Okay, because what are you going to do to the motor? Uh, well, if the motor's out, I would like to paint it. I need to pull the motor, degrease the motor, clean it up as much as I can, uh, seal it with the auto wear sealer. Basically, same thing we did on the, on the truck, the auto wear sealer. Jumbo Johnny. Hey, what are we doing today? Man, I need your help. Oh, what do you got? So, looks like you and I are on motor pulling duty. So, uh... We, we, we kind of had that discussion when you were having a birthday party. Oh, last night. oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the good thing is, I'm sure you probably have a cherry picker and an engine stand. I do have an engine stand. All right. cherry picker. Well, then there you go, so... Yeah, nothing's on the engine stand right now? Nope. You got two boats and no motors. <laughs> we won't talk about that. That's like, that's like, <laughs> man, that's like ham no burger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, okay. if you're down and you're down, I mean... Let's get to work. It's early Let's enough, I think we can knock it out today. You're buying lunch. I, don't <laughs> I always? Yep. <laughs> By the looks of it, you never know that there's a fresh motor sitting under all that dirt and grime. So I'm really stoked to get the guys over here, pull it out, see what we can do with the engine components, match everything up to the outside of the truck. I can't believe this thing still works. They still make these? Ooh, this has got to go. So, got the motor out, just hit it with uh, some awesome degreaser. Now I'm pressure washing it to get everything all nice and clean, get all the dirt and grime off of there. Because now that I have it out, it might as well go ahead and paint the block. So we're gonna use some uh, Createx and auto wear sealer and base coat and get it all cleared up and looking shiny and put all the new parts on. First step on getting some color on this bad boy is to use a direct metal or DTM sealer primer over the old paint. Now that we have the white direct to metal primer on there, I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the Autoborn orange sealer. So that way when I put my orange base over the top, it doesn't take as much material and it gives me a cleaner look. And then, I'm going to add some of the 4020 automotive reducer. Um, I like this one just because it, it heats it up just a little bit, maybe helps it dry a little bit quicker. Uh, it seems to work really good with the sealer. And really it's just a splash. Doesn't take a lot. The orange sealer from the AutoWare makes it easier to cover over the white primer, allowing us to use less base coat color while we're giving the paint something to bite into. Now I'm mixing up the base color that I put together using a few AutoWare air colors. I'm gonna use the original Chevy orange color so it'll look like it did back in 72. Next step is the clear, and I love using the clear coat from Spraymax, which is a two-part catalyzed clear coat and a spray can. Two coats of the Spraymax and we're all good. All right, so we made it over here to Headman Headers, which is right here in Whittier, California, which isn't too far away from Tom's house. As a matter of fact, it's right down the road. And the cool thing about that is, is that they've been here since 1954. I mean, Bob Headman himself had a muffler shop not too far down the road where he started making the first sets of headers for a bunch of different people back in the 50s. I'm over here today to find out what's the best application for the C10. I'm gonna find out if we can get some other stuff from Transdap, which is another part of the Headman Performance Group. There's also, um, some chrome goodies I want to pick up, uh, some valve covers, uh, just some stuff to dress the motor up and make everything work well. So I think if we uh, grab some stuff right now and we get back over to Tom's house, we can get some stuff done. Hey Mark, what are you up to? Hey Mark, how's it going man? Good man, good to see you bud. Oh, likewise. All right. Hey, thanks man. What's going on today? All right, well here's the thing. We're working on a 72 Chevy truck that it needs some help, man, because really it doesn't run very well. And also, too, the thing looks like a rag. Okay. So I'm kind of, you know, come over here, ask for some help. Okay. Um, what do you think will make the thing run better? Well, of course, headers. I mean, that when it comes to 
parts you can put on and pay for in the car, I think the headers give you the most bang for your buck. Um, it basically sets up a bed for everything else upstream. So if you can't get the exhaust out, it doesn't matter what you put up there, a exactly. motor or two of the turbos, anything. Uh, so you need to have a good exhaust so that everything that you put upstream can work at its full uh, potential. So doing headers would be the, the first thing you should go with. Okay. Um, what about, too, making it look better? I mean, I know Transdap has a lot of dress-up stuff, but right. this thing needs, you know, from oil pan all the way up to air cleaner. Um, I mean, are you looking for chrome, aluminum? You know, the truck is orange, and I kind of want to stick with more of a factory theme, so, I mean... Well, we have powder-coated um, items, like uh, lock cars and oil pans and so on. So we have a uh, Chevy Orange. Oh, you do? We want Chevy Orange and uh, uh, asphalt black. Okay. It's kind of like a satin black, but maybe the... Uh, I like the Chevy Orange, because okay. I didn't know you guys made a Chevy Orange. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, we have uh, four blue, too. Like okay. That. that wouldn't go too long, that truck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ford Blue's not going to work. Hey man. How's it going? Hey, this is uh, Marcel. Hey man. Nice to meet you. He's working on a truck project, so he's just looking for some stuff. And uh, I don't know if you can just help him out or what you want to do or uh, want to get some well, stuff. I'm kind of busy right now. If you need anything, just let me know. Pull up the shop. Take one of the parts. Part. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll hey, get it for you. Yeah, okay. Great. Cool deal, man. Man, this place is huge, and it even has everything that I needed, which made things really easy to shop. There was even one point where I felt like I was shopping at Costco, but really for car parts. All right, so this is kind of the last thing that we need for a project here because I already grabbed a set of breathers, a uh, couple brackets. We've got a timing chain cover and an oil pan to put on the motor now. So we kind of have everything that we need to dress up the motor, which is great because Transdep has everything here, obviously in stock. So that being said, I think it's time for us to jam because we got a lot of work to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil pan on this guy right now. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta flip it back around. We'll slam the oil pan out and then we'll bring it back up and we'll put on the stuff that we got from Headman, uh, hamburgers, and also what we got from uh, Transdap. So let's see if I can do this. All right, so we're gonna put the motor over. Turn that. You wanna do it? Oh, not that fast. <laughs> but hey, motor slipped over. <laughs> so we need to put down some gaskets. I like to use this combo from Permatex. The high tack gasket sealer is gonna hold down our gaskets in place while their ultra black silicone will fill any gaps. Beginning with the rear main seal, I brushed over the groove in the main cap on the oil pan gasket. Next, I squeezed out some of the ultra black in the corners of the main cap. Now that the gasket and the main cap were tacky, I set the gasket in place, and then I added a few more dabs of ultra black silicone in the corners. I like using Felpro gaskets, just because they fit like no other. To keep the timing chain and cover gasket in place, I spread a few dabs of high tack on the gasket and the lock. Doing this only really helps during the install, as the Felpro gasket will do all the sealing work. Time to put on the timing cover that I picked up from Transdap. It fits just like the factory one did, and it's also Chevy orange. Plus, it also comes with a chrome plated fastener that made it look really cool. The oil pan that we picked up from Hamburgers fit perfect, and it's set on top of the Felpro gaskets without a hitch. Then I reused the oil pan rails to hold the torque that the pan bolts will create on top of the oil pan gasket, so that way we won't have any leaks. Uh -huh. Looks like Mr. Marcel left his camera here. It's all fancy stuff. It can't be that difficult. <laughs> See what I can do with this. While you were all inside preparing our barbecue feast in there, I went ahead and started installing the ARP studs. I think that is a feast too. Okay, back to what we were doing. <laughs> you good now? I'm good. I'm really hungry. Okay. So I like to use these studs because for one on a stud, but number two, because it helps align, it helps align the valve cover, gasket, and galv valve cover properly. So you can take it on and off, Bobby. You good with that? I'm good. Let me show you how to do that. All right, why don't you? Now I put some of that high tack stuff down on the gasket again. Let's get the grass out of it though, because I don't think we need it off from the grass. A little more grass right here. That's, that is 10 horsepower right there, by the way, if you have a rice rocket. Okay, so I put down the high temp, High tack, excuse me, material. Gasket's all set in place. Fell Pro gasket going down here. It goes right over like a soap. Like it was actually made to happen like that. A little washer over it, a nut. I use Space Age aluminum masking tape. You can get it at the 99 cent store. It's got aluminum foil. 
Uh, for quick little jobs, I'm, I covered up all of the AC lines and the AC hoses. Instead of running a bunch of tape over it, wasting a bunch of tape, hit it with the aluminum foil, it molds to it around contours and stuff, blocks everything, and you rip it off, and it only costs you a buck. So, Okay, so I'm going to take some of the red scotch Brite, it's equivalent to about 800 grit sandpaper, and just going to go over everything, give it a nice scuff. So that way, when we go to put our satin trim black on here, to give it that factory look, it'll have a nice bite to it. And we should be all right. So we cleaned everything out really good. And I'm using some of the Spray Max Satin Trim Black. Gives it more of like a factory look to it. Just to clean her up, make her look somewhat presentable again. How fast do you think that thing runs right now if you like that? Oh, maybe two miles an hour of that. My ass ain't in shape no more. Everybody can still see you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> While Tom was shooting the firewall, I ran out to pick up more Felfile gaskets and I had to stop by the powder coater to get the Edelbrock intake manifold that we had powder coated Chevy Orange. I'm going to use the intake bolts that I grabbed from Transdap plus a little bit of ultra black silicone to seal up the engine's valley. What I didn't expect to happen while I was gone was Jeff Johnny put the freshly painted engine back into the truck. This is where you can really tell just how new this small block really is. It's so fresh and so clean. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here before we put the intake manifold on is we're going to set the gasket. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this Permatech uh, high tack gasket sealant. And what that's going to do is that's going to help us locate and hold the intake manifold gaskets that we got from Felpro in place. And we'll put a few dabs right up here in the middle. Now these gaskets from Felpro, they actually have a crush sealant type of uh, embossed gasket here. So if you look real close, it says this side up, and that's super important because if you were to put it on the other side, the crush gasket wouldn't work, and basically defeats the purpose. So make sure that it's aligned in place by putting a few bolts in it. We want to make sure that the tack sealant dries and that the gasket doesn't move around. All right, so um, I'm a big fan of putting down a bead of silicone across the valley plates there. Uh, so Permatech again is the brand that I like to use when it comes to um, using this for the intake manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run a small bead first across the back side of the valley. And again too, we're just going to start at one end and we'll just lay down a super consistent bead across the front. We don't want it to dry, but we want it to kind of take a shape and also cake over a little bit. So when we set it down, it sets it down positively and we'll seal properly. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and install this guy. So pick it up and we're gonna drop it in place. Okay, so things are looking pretty good right here. Everything's lined up and looking good. So I'm gonna start putting some of the bolts that we got from Headman into the intake manifold. And the way that you wanna start doing this is you wanna work from the center towards the outside. So. We're gonna drop this first bolt, and we're gonna flip over to the other side to the inside as well and get that started. One thing that's super important about this is you wanna make sure you put in all of the bolts first before you begin to tighten any of the bolts down to torque specs. Okay, so now we got all of the uh, bolts um, snug down, uh, just finger tight on top of the manifolds now sitting on top of the cylinder heads. These are the basic tools that you're gonna to need to tighten everything down. You'll definitely need a combination wrench and you'll need a socket that is on a swivel type of um, extension. The reason why you want that is it's a little tricky to get into the, the intake manifold a little bit. If you have that little bit of angle to get into, it makes things a little easier. So let me show you how that works. This right here is where that angle socket really works out a little well. And we're gonna just start like snugging that. And we'll just get it a little tight and then we're gonna switch sides. And the torque spec on an intake manifold is actually 20 pounds. But definitely work your way from the center Work in a crisscross pattern, back and forth in an X, and work from the center of the manifold all the way out, okay? All right, we've let everything kind of sit up for a little while, and now it's time to 
pull the tape off and we're gonna clean up the front. So the first thing we're gonna do, we'll pull it off the top here. Nice. And I'll take my finger and kind of knock that down a little bit. And if you notice, I'm knocking it down onto the tape. So I'm just gonna clean that up. Now, I'm gonna slowly pull off the tape from the engine block, which has all the leftover silicone on the tape rather than on the engine block. Now it's gonna look really nice and clean without a big mess. Now, Edelbrock obviously uh, puts their mark on all of their manifolds by putting this little placard on here that says Made in the USA. The reason why they can do that is because all of Edelbrock's products are made in the USA. The foundry plant's not too far away from us here in Southern California. So I'm gonna go ahead and be patriotic and put this placard back on there to let everyone know that it's made in the USA. Next step. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna put in one of the water uh, fittings here inside, inside the manifold. So this one's actually for the heater hose. Uh, if you notice, that's a 5 8 barb fitting for the heater hose on that side. And obviously we have our pipe plug fitting right here. Now, to seal it up properly, um, yeah, you could use Teflon tape, but honestly, Teflon tape usually uh, dries out after a while under heat because Teflon tape is not really made for automotive. The right thing to use is a thread sealant. And ARP is actually, known for all of their fasteners and known for everything. So I really trust their thread sealant because it's made for automotive use. Um, I just push this up here, get some out of the tube, and spread it around a little bit like this. Make sure it's coated on there evenly. You notice too, I'm putting more on the bottom because obviously that's what's gonna contact first and we want it to seal up properly. So start to just thread that in there by hand first. a little bit on there, because this actually goes right in the path of the radiator water net. So we'll need to plug this one off. Turn that guy down just like so. The excess off of there, so it'll look nice and creepy. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good. I think the next thing we need to put on there is we need to put the valve covers that we got from TransDap. Let's get to work. So thinking ahead, I went ahead and I installed these studs on the, uh, in the cylinder heads, it's gonna make things easier to line up the valve cover and that way we re reduce the chance of it actually leaking. So now that those are installed, place the valve cover on like that. And this is a real important ritual that you wanna do. You wanna make sure that the first thing that you use is this hold down uh, plate that we're gonna put on there, followed by a washer. And then we'll put the ARP nut on there and thread it down into place. One thing that a lot of people do that's a big mistake is that they over tighten the gasket. If you really think about it, a gasket's only gonna push so much. So if you squeeze that thing down in that one spot, you're asking for the, the gasket down the line to fail here. So what you wanna do is you wanna tighten everything evenly. Um, in this case, down to say about 10, maybe 12 foot pounds is what I usually run these at. But again, this is super important to run these little things that they give you from TransDap because this also helps spread the load when you tighten that thing down across the gasket. So this right here equals no leaks. All right, driver's side is set in place. We're gonna move on to passenger. Again, set up this breather with the, uh, the tube here is gonna go out to the back of the car and that'll, again, positively, positively ventilate the crank in that case. And we're gonna just slam it on there just like that. But then these spreader bars here are gonna spread the load across the cover. And they're from TransDap. Thank God that they gave us those as well. Everything now set in place. Uh, it's time for us to go ahead and snug everything up. 7 16 deep sockets, what we're going to need to uh, tighten down the nuts on the studs. First off, you don't want to tighten them up too tight and work in a crisscross pattern like we did on the intake manifold as well, because we really don't want anything to leak. Okay, so we're back out here again working on the truck today, and what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna drop the distributor into the motor. And the distributor that I have for this one is an MSD HEI that I had on another project that was at my house, but they work so good that I'm gonna go ahead and put that into this truck as well. So the reason why I like them the most is an HEI, it's kind of a tried and true, timeless design that GM came out with back in the 70s. Um, HEI actually stands for High Energy Ignition, and what, why it's such a good system is, is that everything is self-contained. The actual coil is on the top of the distributor cap. Um, what makes it nice and easier, makes it cleaner to use. Uh, you don't have to use a resistor or an external coil. All you really have to do is just 
put the thing in there, hook a power to it, and you're ready to go. So real simple, but the way we're going to get to that is, is that I'm going to have to put the engine on top dead center. Okay, so here's our piston stop tool that is used to find top dead center. And what you simply do is remove the spark plug out of the number one cylinder, and you replace that with this, and screw it in. Now, we've already rolled the motor over to top dead center, so it's going to push this out. All right, step one to putting the distributor in the engine is we want to make sure that we have our distributor gasket on there. And that's a super important thing to do because you don't want a, an oil leak. Number two, we're going to take a little bit of grease and just run that around the distributor gear and also the collar of the distributor gear. Yeah, that looks good. Now we're, going to, we're ready to stab this thing into the engine. And the thing that we're going to have to anticipate is where the pointer of the rotor is going to actually land at. Okay. Basically this gear, you can see, is cut at an angle. So you're gonna have to move the, the rotor back a couple degrees so when it falls in place, it'll rotate into where you want the distributor to go. So I'm gonna take a shot at this one real quick and see if we're close to where we want it at. By just dropping it down. Okay, we're close, but we're not exactly where we wanna be. So I'm gonna pull the gear back up I'm going to try over, and I'm going to move the oil pump with this tool again. Okay, moved it just a little bit. We're going to re-enter this trigger back into the block. And I want the vacuum pod here to, to basically be pointing at the number six cylinder. And I'm going to try to get the rotor to point directly towards the number one valve. That's, that's my target is what I'm looking for. We got this distributor hold down clamp from the guys over at Transdap. So we're gonna slip this guy right underneath here and put it in place. I'm gonna move the distributor a little bit to the side. Okay, so we're gonna get this set on the collar. Get the bolt started, and we can slide that back. And to me right now, this thing still looks kinda ugly, so I wanna put a cover over that vacuum pod, and then we'll slam the cap off of it too, so hang on a sec. Okay, so the little things do count, in this case, Transdap comes through on this because it's got this little vacuum pod cover that has some two-sided tape on the inside of it right here. I'm gonna peel that back. Slide it over the steel right here. Give it a good pinch. And boom, bam, that thing looks like a brand new distributor. Love it. Here's the cap. Um, and like I was mentioning before, the design of an HEI, they put the coil right on top of the distributor cap, which you see this distributor cap here. And I mentioned this was a, a used distributor, so I had a set of Taylor wires that were still on it. They look like they're in good shape. I'm gonna put this thing right back on. Now, a distributor is pretty basic. This tool right here, I'm sure everybody's familiar with a, a flat blade screwdriver. It basically turns these little J hooks that hold to the bottom of the distributor body and that's what holds the cap on. So get it ready and move all the J hooks so they're in the out position. Okay, so we wanna make sure that the power source for the coil is on the driver's side and we're gonna put that in place right now. More better. This is the module's uh, connector that goes to the top of the power source. That goes in first. The trucks are already wired for an HEI. So we're gonna hook up the battery and the tack signal, and we're good to go. Now it's out with the old exhaust and in with the new headers. And these long style headers is just what the small block needs. The best part is that they're made right here in Southern California for over the last 60 years. So the first thing I'm going to do with this guy, now that I've got him slid into place, is I'm going to slide it down and I'm just going to put bolts on the outer flange before I put the gasket in. Alright, and the kit is a pair of gaskets and we'll slide these guys out. 
key thing, the reason why I put the header on first, now you can tell that there's like a loop shape here. And because we have a bolt on this end and that end, we're gonna be able to just slide the gasket down in place and then we'll put the rest of the hardware in place. So personally, I found that using ARP bolts is really a smart deal when you put it on headers. The construction of them is nearly flawless. And the last thing you want is a, an exhaust loop with headers. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys right now how to put on one of Edelbrock's new Thunder Series AVS2 carbs. And what's so different with, between this carb and their old carburetors is what they call their annular discharge tubes, which basically means that the way that the fuel is distributed through the carburetor's venturi, it's actually a swirl rather than just it being poured down the center of it. So the efficiency of the carburetor is night and day difference. I know. It may be hard to tell, but Edelbrock's brand new AVS2 carburetor is really a brand new carb from the ground up. It still has an electric choke and a fuel inlet on the passenger side, plus the manual linkage is just like the old carburetor that we had on it before. The big news is that this thing called annular discharge, which is kind of hard for me to explain. So let's go over to Edelbrock, and maybe we can ask someone over there to walk us through it. Eric, what are you up to? You know what, just working on some display stuff for the upcoming Seam Show this year. Oh, serious? Oh, yeah. Wow. So we're, what's this? This is our AVS2 carburetor. So we kind of did like, you know, we launched this last year, but we kind of tried to illustrate what's going on in there. Right. Usually, and it's hard for people to see the show down the throat to see those annular boosters. So we had this display where we can actually turn on a light, you can turn the link oh, and actually cool throw some is. light on the booster so you can actually see it. And also, too, we have a little sign that explains the difference between a traditional down leg booster and our new annual booster. Okay, because that's why I'm here, because we just picked up one of these ABS2 carburetors over the old uh, 1406 saddle rock car we had before. Yeah, yeah the former. Um, I mean, what's annular discharge? What does it actually do? So what it does is your traditional booster on the, on the down leg booster is actually dropping fuel down and letting that air that passes through get the turbulence in the intake, you know, in this whole area right here, actually start to mix that fuel down to the runner. Okay. There's inherent issues with that. It's great, the technology's around for who knows how long, right? 100 years. But it doesn't mix fuel really well on the bottom end. So with the annular booster, it's actually atomizing that fuel right at the point below the booster. Okay. So then that fuel is now atomized literally right here before it gets to the runner. So it's actually, that fuel is now in the air fuel mix. The mix is much better. It's not turbulent. It's not, yeah. you know, big little goblets of fuel. Right. And what that does is just improves your bottom end drivability because it's like you're really, you're getting rid of those hesitations. Yes. Those weird kind of things that happen on the federal thing. Yeah. Absolutely, which and honestly for the average guy, if you're cruising to a car show or you're, you're you know, daily driving it maybe, right. that's where you spend most of your time. At least you're yeah. in LA, in LA traffic, you're in and out of it. You're in that bottom part. You know, you sell them in the mid-range or top range a ton of time, right. where it doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah. So yeah, it just does a really good job of just atomizing that fuel a lot quicker and getting it to where it's a lot better mixture before it hits the cylinder. Right, and hey, that's a performer intake too, yeah, right? Yeah, Because we just put a performer on the truck too, so I mean, I've always put performers on there just because of, they're a dual plane manifold. Yeah. Um, obviously work good off of idle, up until the mid range of motors. Like 1500, yeah. We say the performers are great from idle to 1500. Yeah. It's a dual plane design. They're really, we consider it like a stock replacement. So you're really replacing cast iron with aluminum. So yeah. you're gaining weight. We've also gone into massage the design a little bit, made the runners a little bit better, improved power. I think we, we stayed on a, on a 350. It's like five to 10 horsepower more. Okay. Just because we've improved the runner design. And then also, too, that dual plane design, great again for street drivability because you're actually separating half of the runners. Right. You're not creating that turbulence. So in the single plane, everybody's all of a sudden fighting off that plenum. Right. And you get a lot of turbulence, you can get pulses at low end, you can get the fuel not mixing well. Sure. So with that dual plane design, you're actually separating it and so essentially you only your potential for disrupting the air is at every 180 degrees of cam instead yeah. of every 90. Right. So it makes for a lot, again, way better drive blend. This combination for a street car is great. Run one nut down, take the other nut run that one together. You're gonna take a wrench. Actually, I need two wrenches, so. So now you know that when you tighten this thing down and you tighten that stud, it'll basically snug up tight. For a little bit of insurance, some blue uh, thread locker is really important. And you just wanna put just a little dab on there. And we're gonna thread it right into place. Run that stud in there until it stops. That's nice and tight. Take the other wrench there, and we can break these guys loose. 
Easy peasy. We got our studs in place and it's time to put on gaskets and the carb spacer. So obviously we're gonna start out with a gasket and we're gonna put that on. Okay, that's happy. Now it's time for our carb spacer. Okay, one thing I wanna point out here, we ordered the carb spacer from Transdap that has a vacuum port in the back of it. Why? Because we wanna put the PCV valve back into the carb spacer. So it does come with a block off if you wanna block it off but in our case, we're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna put a vacuum port on it. Here we go. And after you put down the carb spacer, you still need to put a gasket between the carb spacer and the carb. Transdap hooked us up with that. We're ready to fly. Now this Thunder Series carburetor, uh, there's a few things I wanna point out. One of them is this model right here, which is their 1906, is not ready for E85, so don't put E85 in this thing, it'll turn into a goopy mess. Number two, uh, so normally on these carburetors, they're, to put the feed line in, it's just a rubber hose that goes onto this nipple fitting right here. And this is fine, this is cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way, but Edelbrock does make a nice fuel line. It's more of a hard line that sits underneath the carb. You see it kind of slings underneath it. So we opted for the upgrade. What's important about putting this on is, this banjo fitting right here has these two aluminum crush washers. One's on the fitting, one's here in my hand. They need to go, one needs to go on each side of the actual fitting before you install it. And that goes on just like so. And now I'm not gonna tighten it down until I actually get it on the car and get everything bolted down, line everything up, and then I'll go ahead and snug this open. Okay, before I put it on, I'll notice too, one other thing. On the fitting down here, on this push-on fitting, you'll see that there's a hole right here that's threaded. Now, if you want to run a fuel gauge, you're more than welcome to. If not, Edelbrock does give you a little plug that you can plug it off with. So, it's your choice. Okay, here we go, guys. I'm gonna slide down in place. Okay, point one thing out here. I'm only putting nuts on the passenger side of the carb because we're still gonna need to put the throttle linkage brackets on the driver's side. So, set that up first. And as I just said a second ago, now that I've got the carburetor in place, I can snug up the fuel supply line. Okay, so what are we gonna do about carb linkage and getting the cables to work properly, especially with an automatic transmission that has a kick down cable? Well, TransDap's got us covered. So what makes this bracket super cool is how adjustable it is because obviously down here, this bottom cable is for the trans kick down and the top portion is for the throttle cable. So if you need to adjust it back and forth, you've got adjustment on that one. All right, so just pick this up from TransDap. It is a master cylinder brake cover. Um, it's the lid for to keep our fluid in so we don't shoot fluid everywhere. Something real simple, easy to pop on and off. Uh, just take our old one. Pop that guy that way. Come on. Pop that guy that way. And then, and then we pull this out. Try not to get brake fluid anywhere. And then what we're gonna do is switch out our rubber real quick. There we go. Okay, so we got our valve covers and everything on. So now we just popped on our filler cap and our PCV valve to run to the back. So everything is nice and super clean here. Since we have a new air cleaner, which we got from Transdap, nice chrome one, thought I'd put a little more uh, personal to it for Pops, since we've done a few spots for them now. We got Pop 72 with some little custom pinstriping by myself. We got the valve covers, the breathers, everything we needed for the inside, all from TransDap. Uh, power steering cover, like I said, air cleaner, uh, new 
valves in the back. We got the, oh, we got the uh, spark plug separators and of course the headman hitters. So Bobby, yeah. how's she running? Like a champ. All the new stuff from Transdam, Burger, uh, Edmund, Edelbrock, MSD, MSD. Uh, dude, couldn't ask for better. Fires up like a champ every morning. I mean, this thing, like right now, it's it's running like a dream. I mean, it feels like a brand new car. Dude, pop the hood and actually be proud of it being a small block. It's oh, not, yeah. a, not a LS. Oh yeah, being just a super clean small block. Right. And the thing sounds really good. I mean, dude, the headers totally changed the way this thing runs and how it sounds. Dude, the black hitman coated headers. Oh, I know. The powder coated valve covers. That's iffy at first, but once we started painting everything and everything blended together. Well, dude, it was cool that Transdap, actually, that's that's their factory color. I mean, you could order them that way or black or chrome or I think they even make Ford blue, but that's that's for all this work. Yeah, you know, and the, they probably got like two in stock. And that's right. all they've ever made. Exactly. Picture me rolling. 